think I gave it the wrong name. Yes, I accidentally gave it session four as the name, but none, <laughs> nonetheless, this is session five. I'll update the name later. Uh, thanks everybody for joining me. Let's go ahead and get started the same way that we always do. And does anybody remember what was happening last time? Uh, the dwarf almost died. Very true. Flash is still passed out? No, not quite. Okay. So, like, there was a bit of a, a tense combat there last time, but as far as uh, story progress and revelations, uh, not much happened. Um, you guys ran into a group uh, of uh, disreputable-looking individuals wearing long leather jackets with the letters S-A-M embroidered on them, which you then found out was the acronyms for the Strong Absalom Movement, a bit of a racist uh, human... Uh, group who thinks that Absalom Station was created by humans for humans and all these dang aliens should just get off their lung, dang it. Um, and so they obviously didn't take too much of a liking to you guys, given that there isn't a single human among you. And uh, they rather impolitely asked you to get the, uh, get the pronk off their station. Uh, of course, you guys refused, and uh, after a short exchange of words, we went into combat. Um... There was a little bit of trading of damage back and forth, but unfortunately, uh, poor Braun Stronghammer got kind of uh, ganged up on uh, by several of them uh, and uh, ended up getting his uh, teeth kicked in pretty handily. Um, and, but he was able to definitely get some licks back and did some damage. Um, Wreckage managed to horribly embarrass himself uh, and squeak like a girl while missing all of his shots and uh, causing Sparky to also miss his shots um, and didn't do any damage, but he also didn't take any damage. So cowardice, you know, seems to be working in his favor uh, to some extent. Kima, on the other hand, stabbed the leader of the group in the Boing Loings with her pain claw, uh, doing uh, a decent amount of damage. Not enough to really put him out of commission or anywhere near it, but uh, enough to make him think twice about calling her girly and uh, ignoring her combat. Um, but then, thankfully, they didn't seem quite uh, hostile enough to murder uh, a dwarf in cold blood, so once they had downed poor Dwarvor Creel, who uh, still has a, uh, a knife sticking through his armor into his chest where he was, that uh, had him coughing up blood, um, they uh, left him there and with some threats saying that y'all had uh, better not be around for much longer and that if they saw your face again, they might not go so easy on you. Um, they left the scene, after which point Sparky grabbed a health serum, uh, Mark 1, from um, Wreckage's uh, pants pocket while he was uh, passed out on the floor with Kima, um, both of whose uh, internet connections had been uh, unceremoniously cut off. And uh, he stuck it in Braun's uh, rather ample posterior, um, bringing him back up to seven hit points and consciousness. Uh, so that is where we start off the current session. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A little bit, um, just to let you guys know, because I know it's been a while since we played what was happening overall, uh, you guys have been investigating the death of Dwarf Creel, who was your contact on the station, and you're in with the Starfinder. Unfortunately, he was murdered um, by what you now believe to be the Downside Kings in a bit of a turf war between the Downside Kings and the level 21 crew. Um, you guys uh, have been investigating both groups. Uh, you actually went to level 21 and were able to find out a good amount about them, including their um, semi-altruistic uh, activities, given that they are a criminal organization, and also that you can get in touch with the head of the group, Jabaxa, uh, who is an Isoki-like wreckage. And uh, what you need to do to get in touch with them is you need to go to Mama Fat's Bodega on level 21 and ask for the Eoxian Egg Salad Sandwich. Um, you guys uh, were the also, um, Kima, don't forget that you agreed to date uh, to go on a date with uh, another um, Lashunta named May, uh, which is supposed to happen tomorrow. It is currently kind of uh, evening-ish, probably somewhere between 4 and uh, 8 o'clock. And um, you guys are on your way back to your space B&B to get some rest before heading out the next day. Right. Uh, so, that was fun. I need a beer. <laughs> no, 
no, no, no, no, no. We we did that last time. It didn't help. He just didn't have enough beers. He needs more. But but he he pa he like he almost passed out and he drank all the moonshine and it was <laughs> not good. <laughs> Don't you see? I have a dagger in my chest right now. Yeah, maybe we should go to the doctor instead of the bar? Uh, so, you are actually uh, able to use your, uh, your communication devices and summon a medical bot uh, to your location if you are in need of medical services. However, they will charge you. Uh, it's not a free service. What is this? England? Or, I don't know, what's another uh, semi-socialist country? What do you think this is? Sweden? I don't know. I feel like maybe we should just pull the knife out and shoot some health serum in him. I mean, technically, he's actually fine as far as, like, the knife. You can take it out. Uh, he's at seven hit points, so he's stable. Uh, he definitely so could use a ten-minute rest. He just going to reach get... out and, like, pull the knife out and be like, there you go, no more knife in your back. Or armor, I guess. No more knife in your armor. No more Mr. Knife Guy. <laughs> Good job, Wayne. <laughs> Thanks, Kima. Uh, You're let's welcome. get to bed. I'll sleep um, this one off. If you won't let me have any beer. I love you can have beer you at the house. Like ripped out of your chest, and your reaction is, Thanks, Kima. What, you think He's that's the dwarf. first time it's ever happened? <laughs> Uh, Speaking no. of which, at some point we need to get Bron a hammer or not a hammer, an axe, just so that he can use it on somebody and then go he's got me axe embedded in his nervous system! Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, you guys uh, head off. You actually uh, don't see any other uh, events on your way back to your space b, &B. Uh, The only slightly odd thing is you do uh, occasionally, as you're walking by various vents, you just hear uh, these strange noises. Occasionally it sounds like mad laughter or occasional cryptic uh, snatch snatches of cryptic um, riddles and uh, still more uh, bits about uh, destiny and heroes and uh, the arduous journey yeah, ahead of you. Do we pass any of those like bratwurst stand things? Sure. But like space bratwurst. So if we pass, so, so it's like so it's like a, a bun with we're on a... a space bratwurst and a beer. Okay, the space bratwurst is a bun with um, a vaguely uh, vaguely hot dog shaped tentacle, uh, suckers and all, uh, purple in color, kind of draped across it. He's like, you want a uh, Akatonian radish with that or any sauerkraut? No. What do you want, Ron? <laughs> Just plain looks appetizing enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, so he reaches into a tank. You hear him uh, like squelching, uh, sticky, slimy sounds, and he pulls out the the tentacle and slaps it down on this uh, bun, which is uh, black in color, but seems to be some sort of bread type thing. Um, and then uh, he hands it over and says, "All right, you wanted a beer with that? As long as it's regular beer." Uh, well, define regular beer. I mean, I only got the one kind, so uh, it's regular for me. I'll take it. All right. Uh, and so he pours out um, literally just a Pilsner. I think that's a beer type. <laughs> I don't, it is. I don't drink beer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. It, it, hey, it's... Braun. Hey, Braun. I've only got one credit. Uh... Do you think you could get me a hot dog, too? Bratwurst. These hot dogs are one credit, young whippersnapper. You want one? Uh, make me one with everything. All right. Uh, and so you transcend the mortal plane and uh, disappear. Uh, you have now reached enlightenment and are one with everything. Oh man. <laughs> 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 No, uh, actually, uh, after uh, a few seconds, he comes back with um, a small uh, paper like uh, tray 
And inside is just an absolutely unrecognizable mass of some sort of purple and yellow colors. Um, you think there's a tentacle twitching around underneath that somewhere, but it's pretty hard to tell. All right, kid, here you go. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, 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 um. Okay, make a fortitude check. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, so while you guys are uh, doing that, um, you guys uh, walk and eat, I would assume. Uh, Kima, are you getting anything? No. Okay. Uh, so you guys uh, walk and eat on your way back, uh, quickly making your way there. Um, Kima's the only one who realizes... This looks gross. <laughs> it's not gross. It's perfectly normal on the planet I'm from. And what planet is that? Wang Tun like 5! A... I take a tiny bite like from the corner of my mouth, just as small as I could get to taste it like a little kid. Okay, um, so the bread is, uh, it's definitely kind of dry, um, and tastes slightly charred, but otherwise not bad, um, and the tentacle itself is actually rather soft, um, almost like, uh, almost gelatinous, uh, and has kind of a, uh, a, a rich, meaty, kind of earthy flavor. I can get behind this. I chow down. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, Wreckage, you will only be slightly nauseated um, from eating all the nonsense that he threw on top of your quote-unquote hot dog. Hey, I know we're role-playing, but speaking of nauseated... <laughs> um, no, it's not the time! I just want to say, we found a dead skunk under our house and then realized that's why the house was making us all want to bark. Nice. Fun. All right, uh, so you guys return, um, and uh, eh, what time do you want it to be when you get back? Like, uh, still dinner-ish time, or do you want to get back late enough that you uh, don't have to awkwardly admit that you already ruined your appetite? Hey, I did not eat so I could have dinner. I want to be back in time for dinner. <laughs> All right, um... Now, of course, uh, having your uh, famous dwarven constitution, I doubt that a single hot dog really did too much to uh, dull uh, bronze appetite. Uh, wreckage, though, you are between being uh, slightly nauseated and having even, you know, a small pile of um, unidentifiable alien, un unidentifiable alien uh, detritus. Uh, you probably are not going to be uh, taking part in dinner. Um, yeah. <laughs> to get back, uh, dinner was actually uh, already underway, but uh, Tabitha immediately welcomes you and says, Oh, dearies, come in, come in. Uh, we actually uh, only just started. It's still warm, I think. There's Tabitha. Oh, good. I've been looking forward to this all day. I kind of slouch into one of the chairs. All right. Uh, yes, there is, uh, as, as you have come to expect, a veritable feast is laid before you. Uh, this one seems to be centered around a, a large steaming pork cutlet, um, along with a number of uh, um, boiled uh, vegetables, uh, potatoes and carrots and onions. Um, in addition, there's a, a, a large chef salad full of uh, boiled eggs and cheese cubes and... Uh, um, cranberries and uh shredded nuts um and uh she immediately begins to offer uh you know additional side dishes and breads and other things pastries and jams if uh anybody is interested in them um and uh lynn dragonsong the uh elf that you guys met earlier put her on the board um is also uh, already there. Um, and she actually uh, takes notice of you guys um, when you enter this time, actually, uh, you know, uh, breaking away from her book long enough to kind of wave and go, oh, hi, you guys are back. Yeah, hi, how was uh, your day? 
I wasn't too bad. I uh, actually really good. I went to the, see the Starfinders at the Lorespire Complex, and I told them um, about kind of my aspirations of joining the group, and uh, yeah, actually managed to work out uh, a way for me to kind of possibly see that happen. You see, uh, they've agreed that if I can uh, get the scoop, so to speak, on what's going on with the Drift Rock and uh, all that mess. Uh, they'll actually make me a member. Now, of course, the difficult part is the the ship, the hippocampus is uh, is the hippocampus. I may have given you the wrong name. Ignore the word hippocampus. I'll look it up in a second. Um, yeah, the the ship and the drift rock, rock itself, Acreon. I knew I got the name wrong. Um, I didn't even look it up. It just came to me. Anyway, um, the uh, the Acreon and the drift rock uh, are both in quarantine. Uh, I would have to be able to get some sort of official approval from Port Authority or uh, someone else to be able to to visit it. So I guess that's the, the next thing to be done. Well, it sounds like you're well on the way, and that's quite exciting. Yes, absolutely. Uh, now, of course, uh, given that uh, who knows what's on there and it could be potentially dangerous, I'll also need to find a, a group of like-minded adventurers to join me. Um, I wouldn't want to impose, but would you at least consider possibly um, coming along if I'm able to find a way? I like okay. rocks. <laughs> you like rocks? <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. I like to blow things up. Do you need somebody that can blow things up? Uh, quite possibly. Nice. All right. Well, I'm glad you guys well, at least considered it. Like we're it. In. All right. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll let you know if anything uh, anything moves forward on that. All right. Um, wreckage, your so, um, don't move forward. Just point us in the direction of the person that's in your way. <laughs> I would rather keep things peaceful. Honestly, I I, I hate. I, you know, if it's in self-defense, then obviously it's necessary, but otherwise, uh, it really is better to try and get your way uh, non-violently. You know, uh, you catch more flies with uh, honey than you do with vinegar, as they say. Or you catch them with your sniper before they see you. Oh, that, um, that would be quite a feat if you could snipe flies out of the air, but... Uh, Nonetheless, I will be uh, potentially glad to have you guys along if things turn sour. Um, I just hope that it won't be necessary. Um, and Wreckage, don't forget, or, yeah, Wreckage, uh, don't forget that you are currently, um, you know, uh, between uh, visits to the bathroom. <laughs> That's uh, why I have had few words. <laughs> yeah, you may want to... Uh, sequester yourself in your room and try to recover um yeah so the uh the dinner progresses quite nicely uh tabitha uh and uh, you guys have kind of a pleasant conversation um i would imagine you guys don't have anything too pointed that you want to uh talk about but if you do uh we should go ahead and do that before moving on I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. Could you repeat that, please? Basically, I just asked if there was any discussions that you guys wanted to have uh, before moving on. Delicious. Let's go to bed. <laughs> oh, yeah, we gotta so, get ready to go to Mama do, Fats. Do you have an outhouse by any chance? Uh, I, I think don't know there's... if you want me doing this in here. Oh, don't worry. The uh, The cleaning robots will take care of it. Okay, thank you. Darts into the bathroom, <laughs> locks the door. Horrible sounds ensue. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, you guys uh, head over. Your uh, your beds are all made up, nice and crisp. Uh, you know, with uh, 
all of the little fancy flourishes, you know, the extra fold underneath the pillow and a uh, little, uh, little chocolate mint on the pillow and, you know, fresh flowers, uh, which are uh, not real. They're synthetic, but they give off a pleasing scent uh, in a vase uh, next to your nightstands. And um, everything seems to have been set in order. If any of you left out clothes or whatever, um, dirty clothes or other items, they've been either put away um, or if uh, or potentially washed and then put away. Um, so it seems that Tabitha has been uh, busy while you guys were out. Sweet, my room's clean. <laughs> All right, um, so you guys, yeah, nothing too strange happens uh, in the night. Does anyone have any notable dreams that you'd like to talk about? Uh, okay, doesn't sound like it. Um, so, yeah, uh, you guys wake up. It's the next morning. Um, breakfast goes quite smoothly again. Um, Lynn is not there this time, uh, but Tabitha is still there to serve you all. Um, and it's a, a nice hearty porridge full of, uh, and I may have already used this, but whatever. It's a hearty porridge uh, with um, fruits uh, in it and uh, some... Uh, like uh, bacon or sausage on the side. Uh, and she says, this will keep you guys going. Uh, porridge I've found is always good. It sticks to the ribs. Yes, that that's true. I uh, just wanted to thank you again for all your hospitality, Tabitha. You've been a very gracious host. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I just absolutely adore having guests over. Uh, you guys have fun. Stay safe out there. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. You All right, then. Um, did you hear from Lynn this morning? Sounded like she had a bunch of big plans last night. Oh, no, I actually haven't seen her this morning. Um, I guess I could check her room, but uh, she may have snuck out. All right, well, thank you. Don't, No need to worry. All right. Take care. Um, all right, so you guys head out. You guys are now standing outside of the, uh, the large building that uh, Tabitha has her condo in. Do we know how to get to Mama Fat's bodega? Uh, yes, you, you go to Space Google and you type in Mama Fat's. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's actually that easy. All right, let's do it. Cool. Uh, are you going to walk there, or do you want to summon your yourselves a, a space Uber? Uh, how far is it? It's a ways, um, because you're on a, a higher level. You've got to go all the way down to level 21 again, not to mention crossing to the correct point on level 21. Um, so if you were to walk the entire way, it would probably take you um somewhere around two to three hours uber uber all right all so right. you guys uh <laughs> some lazy a... piece of shit wins <laughs> you guys summon a space uber uh it's gonna be one credit each uh so please deduct that from your uh current wealth um and Fine, uh, <laughs> a, uh excuse a... me yes I spent my last credit on that thing that made me barf all over the bathroom. Can somebody pay for me? <laughs> Where's my credits? I don't even know how many I have. Um. Oh, I'm rich. I've got 783 credits. Yeah, it's on me, wreckage. Even yeah. though you're lazy. And I think you will reduce that through the journal. Just uh, set a negative number instead of a positive number. Same way as if you were like giving yourself money. Um journal do i have to hit play um it at the bottom of navigate character ah general no uh you may need to Interface load your make any sense. you may need to load the full character if you're just looking at the um the combat data 
What if you can do it from I'm here? in the journal entries. If you click the thing that says navigate character at the top, on that menu, journal is the bottom thing, and you just click general. Yeah, but now how do I add an entry? So you click on the... Um, you see where it says entry date XP gained, and there's like a thing that's sitting there that says real date, game date, etc. You just click yeah. on that. Well, that, you'll, you're going to need to add a new one. Uh, right, that's can, what I'm not yeah. seeing. So hit the plus on the red on the, the red bar. There should be a plus. No plus. Yep, no plus for me either. There should be. I just, uh, I just edited the one that was in there earlier today. Huh. All right, well, we'll, we'll ignore that for now. Uh, try to remind me after we wrap up this session uh, to take a look at it, see if we can figure it out. It might be... Let me try one thing real quick. Um, what if I resolve the scene? All right, did that make any difference? I still do not see a plus. All right, what if I abandon the scene? No, it end. just minimizes it. What about now? Is there a plus? Same thing. Now it's reloading. Yeah, all I could do is view, edit, or delete the existing entries. Okay, I mean, you can technically use one of your existing entries. Just go and click on the entry itself, uh, and then hit like the, the credits that you want to add. Um, and then just say add wealth or XP. Or in this case, remove. So like negative two, since you're paying for wreckage. Okay. Cool. We got it. Yeah, but now it just says that I got two fewer credits the last time. So we kind of lose the yeah. audit trail, but... Yeah, it's well, okay. probably for for things like just um, random shopping, you'll want to set up one for that. That way you're not uh, having a, a ton of events. But I'm not sure why you don't see the plus. I mean, I'm seeing it. I can't use it because the character's under your control, but I can see it. Very strange. Um, anyway, let's get back to the game. So, yeah, you guys... Uh, uh, summon. Oh, uh, speaking of, real quick. Hopefully this does work. Um, everybody, go ahead and uh, do click uh, in co under combat. There should be rest and recharge, and then add a night's rest. Where did you say it was? Should be right in the combat section. It's right under like your hit points and your stamina. Got it. All right. Um, yeah, and that should fully recover everybody's stamina points and should give you back uh, a hit point or two. All right, has everybody done that? Hello? I did it. Okay, cool. Did it uh did it recover your stamina points and everything? Yes, so I now I have full stamina and I have eight hit points instead of seven. Huh, it hasn't synced to me yet. That's interesting. I thought that would uh be a little bit faster, but I guess not. That's fine. Um I got an error. Cast member cannot be modified while derived proxy exists. Show error details. Uh you I think you need to do that from the stage. So go to the stage. And do it. Uh, if you, you you need to do it from there instead of doing it to your actual character in the PCs and players section because they basically have proxied your character over to the stage. Okay. All right. Yeah, looks like everybody is sitting pretty now. Uh, we've got Bron with just a few missing hit points, four it looks like, and everybody is feeling much better. Um, 
So yeah, you guys uh, summon yourselves a space uber. It's uh, it comes over, it comes in, and it's like this robot um, with uh, wheels instead of legs, um, and it's it's uh, kind of holding with its little robot arms a uh, a rickshaw. Oh, it's so cute. And he says, your space Uber has arrived. Please get in and list your destination. Mama Fats. All right. A bodega. <laughs> Mama Fats Bodega. Is that the one on level 21 or the one in the spike? Level 21. Very good. What and is the spike? Uh, the spike, if you remember the shape of the station, it's kind of shaped like a top. Um, and so the bottom part of the station is the spike. Uh, it is the lowest, lowest parts of the station and not a place you probably want to be going. Um, this is like even lower than like the uh, the slum type areas where the Downside Kings and the level 21 crew are from. All right, so you guys uh, zip off uh, as uh, Wreckage uh, pulls out his phone and answers Braun's question in the most infuriating teenager way possible, where he's like, just ask Space Google, and then says what I said. Um, and so you guys uh, zip off, and uh, you guys are there pretty shortly, about half an hour later. You pull up outside of a uh, rather run-down looking... Um, establishment it's got like uh some rusted old fuel pumps outside despite the fact that that makes no sense uh wayne don't forget to give sparky some repairs you're probably well you have no money so never mind you can't because you'd need to use upbs but eventually i don't know actually i don't sparky know how to edit sparky now i don't know sparky should be at full health i would think how do I get to Sparky now? It should be the same way you get to yourself. Go to the stage, and he should just be listed. And then click on him, go to combat, hit his hit points, and then he should be at full health. I don't know why he's down at three. So anyway, um, yeah, rusty kind of fuel pumps outside, um, gaudy neon signs uh, that says Mama Fats Bodega, and it's got a, um, a neon outline of a, an incredibly rotund um, woman with uh, all the curves. And uh, you guys are presumably heading inside. Yeah, I got to get me one of those Yoxian egg salad sandwiches. All right. So yeah, you guys um, open up the doors. Uh, it's these kind of swinging double doors as you do so. Uh, you hear the kind of uh, chime go off. Um, and um, yeah, the the entire area, it's um, bodegas. I mean, you can think of them as like a convenience store type thing. So it's like a 7-Eleven uh, type of thing. Um, so there's a little bit of uh, food kind of in the center with a woman uh, behind the counter, um, you know, the little hot dogs on rollers and, uh, you know, travel burritos. And then there's also, you know, painkillers and condoms and, um, you know, rather sketchy looking, possibly um, past its expiration date milk in the refrigerator way in the back and all that kind of stuff going on. Cool. I go to the counter, and I ask for an Eoxian egg salad sandwich. Ah, you want the special, do you? Uh, turning around is uh, uh, even more rotund than the uh, the sign outside would have suggested. Um, an incredibly girthy female um, Isoki. Um, she's uh, wearing uh, gaudy makeup, uh, kind of uh, powdered across her face, and bright blood red lipstick. Um, and so she says, all right, give me a second to put the order in. Can I get you anything else while you're waiting? Nope. What about your friends? You there, the cute Lashanta girl and the delicious-looking little uh, rat boy over there. 
I just texted it, bro. I'm like, did she seriously just say I look delicious? <laughs> I'm okay. Thank what you very is much. Her deal? <laughs> he All is right. delicious looking, isn't he? Oh, I could just pinch those little cheeks and gobble him up. All right, well, don't be shy, you guys. If there's anything you need, just let me know. Um, and so then she uh, kind of writes something down on a piece of paper and then uh, heads out. You can see her uh, kind of leave through a back door. And she also says, now don't steal anything while I'm gone. I have cameras. And she we looked at this reputable. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Whatever happened to you could gobble me up. I still could. <laughs> um, so she's oh, gone for. She's uh, gone for a couple of minutes and then uh, comes back out and she says, "Well, thank you for waiting, blue dears. Uh, it seems that we are all out of the ingredients for the sandwich, so uh, you'll have to come back if you want it." Uh, should be ready sometime around six o'clock this evening if that works for you. I guess we'll see you at six. Does that All mean you need to meet your date? Miss your date, Kima? Nobody said I had to come back. You two can go on your own. Why does this thought disturb me? <laughs> All right. Uh, so you guys, uh, anything else you want to do in here before you uh, head out? Buy some bubble gum. <laughs> All right. Are you getting? Are you uh, getting uh, tough gum? Tough gum. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you you buy a a packet of tough gum. It's a special gum that's uh, uh, specifically uh, marketed toward bullies. Uh, it's supposed to make you strong and give you a, a tough looking jawline. Is there also you know like date gum or something that's supposed <laughs> to yeah you know, I don't know make you look a Attractive? <laughs> I mean, there's normal just bubble gum. It's called alcohol, dude. <laughs> What's the Jabaxin special? Who asked that? Rec asked that whilst looking at the menu. Ah, I don't remember ever putting that on the menu. Uh, sounds almost like a name. Wayne, I think you're getting confused from last time we played when it was the Jabaxin special. This time it's the Eoxian egg salad sandwich. I know it's the Axian egg salad sandwich. <laughs> I just decided to throw in the other one and see what would happen. All right, well, you found out. Not much. You know, Easter egg or something. Like, <laughs> you, you know, uh, it's you, like the cheek. She, 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 as soon as you say that, her eyes turn red, dramatic music plays, and she points one finger at you and says, What did you say? And then a trapdoor drops out from underneath you and you disappear into a dark basement where she does gobble you up. Easter egg found. Oh, no! <laughs> Is there any date gum? <laughs> yes, there, there's, uh, there's date gum. It's, uh, it's got Spanish fly in it, just so that you can be extra creepy. Oh, Lordy. And the, uh, the guy on the package is just, um, what's that? The, the guy with the pencil mustache? Uh, John Waters? Or, yeah, that guy. Or... Uh, it's got John yeah. Waters on the on the front saying it's <laughs> very good and uh, kind of twisting his uh, pencil mustache. All 
All right. Anything else you guys want to do in the bodega before heading out? Uh, Kim has bought some gum. Wreckage has bought some uh, date gum. Actually, wreckage must have. Gum. Actually, wreckage must have stolen it because he has no money. <laughs> no, I thought Kimo was buying date gum. She already bought bubble gum. Oh, okay. Never mind. All right. Well, I'm going to assume you guys have nothing else to do in the bodega, so you guys are now standing outside the bodega. What are you going to do next? Well, we got a day to kill. Yep. Uh, it's probably around uh, eight, 8 or 9 at this point in the a.m. Uh, so you guys have... Uh, Good ten hours to to kill before six. I'm going back to our house and I'm going to shave every part of my body except the hair on my head. <laughs> you gonna pencil in eyebrows? Do I have eyebrows? That's a good I'm question. Like, I don't know if we should take eyebrows. I don't think I do. Let me see if I can find a good picture of a Lashinta face. Nope. You don't really have, Lushinta don't really have eyebrows. They have kind of like head bumps, and then they've got their antenna. All right, so you don't need to shave to to pencil in your eyebrows. Well, that's oh. how I'm going to spend my day. So the boys are on their own. I guess some of them have eyebrows. They're kind of inconsistent. I get in my room and I'll shave every inch of my body. <laughs> Alright. Wreck wreckage will now be a naked mole rat. No! No! <laughs> Alright, so Wreckage, Braun, anything you guys want to do while Kima is preparing for her date? Can I work on repairing rat, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Sparky? I think Sparky, I don't know, that, I don't think Sparky actually took any damage. I'm not sure why he, uh, had low health, so I'm pretty sure he's already repaired. Okay. Well, then I'm going to go use my VR room. Alright. What about you, Bron? What are you up to? Uh. Is there a way I can, like, heal? Uh, so you could get some, uh, some health serums. Uh, those would heal you, obviously. I guess, uh, do you have, um, the, uh, healing skill? Medicine, yeah. Go ahead and give me a medicine check. If you roll sufficiently well, uh, I might give you a couple hit points for that. Medicine check. Oh. <laughs> um so you give it you give it a good shot. Uh you kind of uh are looking at it and try to sp spray it with some antiseptic and put some band-aids on, but uh it doesn't seem to be really doing too much other than, uh, you know, not making things worse. Um, while you're at that, uh, I think Lynn has a decent heal check. Let me see real quick. Uh, yeah, she's got a plus nine in medicine, so let's give her a shot. So she actually, um, you're doing that, you, uh, kind of left the door open, and she notices what's going on, and she comes in and goes, oh, that looks hateful, what happened? Just some racist thugs. The usual. Huh. Was it the strong Absalom movement? You know it. Yeah, they've been hassling me a couple of times. I've uh they've actually made me rather uncomfortable. A few times I've had to really get out of there. Thankfully, they don't seem too keen on facing my uh robot and she 
kind of gestures into a hallway where uh, Butterfly is. And if you don't remember Butterfly... That's Butterfly. Um, but yeah, uh, thankfully they uh, they seem to be a little bit uh, nervous trying to face against Butterfly, so that's helped. But uh, at one point there was this group of four. There was like this weird, bald, baby-looking man, and then another guy with like a bad spray tan and a comb over, and uh, a couple of others, and... Uh, <laughs> They they uh they threatened to, well I I won't even say it anyway I got out of there as quickly as I could. Oh, it, it helps if I actually put a die in there. All right, so she does she does a bit better. Um, so she's uh, so she's like, well, uh, I actually uh, I know a bit about uh, some healing herbs. If you don't mind uh, some natural treatment, I could uh, take a shot at it. Assuming you don't protest. Okay, sounds like you're not. Um, so yeah, uh, go ahead and give yourself another two hit points. So that should uh, put you a little closer to full now. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you again now. Okay, weird. Yeah. But anyway, so go ahead and give yourself a couple hit points. Uh, oh, so she, right she gets out like a mortar and pestle and um, some various herbs that she's got uh, sealed away in like this vacuum sealed. Uh, it, I mean, it looks like a tackle box, basically. Uh, so she opens it up and it's got a bunch of little uh, compartments with various uh, things in it. Um, some spores and mushrooms and leaves and uh, stalks and other uh, herbs of various descriptions. And uh, She uh, selects a few and kind of grinds them up and... Um, Adds uh, a couple of oils from some uh, some jars that she retrieves from her room and uh, kind of uh, applies that gently across the, the wound. And uh, you can uh, definitely feel them taking effect already, uh, soothing the uh, inflammation, and uh, it feels quite good. Wonderful. Feel mm. like a young dwarf again. <laughs> Uh, well, you can't be that old. Uh, dwarves live quite a long time. Not as long as us elves do, but uh, us, this, you still are quite long-lived. Um, so uh, with your shirt off, uh, she also kind of uh, sees the uh, the scars crisscrossing uh, your back and uh, kind of uh, looks a bit taken aback and... Says, uh, where did these come from? As she uh, runs one finger kind of across a particular prominent one. That's none of your business. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to pry. Uh, well, anyway, uh, I hope you feel better. Um, if uh, if it starts to get red or itchy, or uh, especially if it starts to turn um, kind of a yellow color or purple uh, and produces pus, uh, definitely let me know. That is a definite sign of infection, and we'll want to get that taken care of. Uh, so well, she sounds uh, good. grabs her stuff and uh, heads out. Alrighty, anything anyone else wants to do before we get to uh, presumably around like four or five-ish when you would want to head out again? Okay. All right. So, um, who's leaving first, Kima or the rest of you? I, I figure I six is probably earlier than the date. I don't know. Uh, when did Aren't you? Are they want... at the same time? Uh, they're pretty close to each other. They're at least within like an hour. We both leave at exactly the same time, and we fight over who gets the first cab. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, that happens, and then you guys eventually uh, are able to summon two different uh, space Ubers. Go ahead and 
reduce the uh, credits yet again. It's going to be one per person, and someone will need to pay for the uh, the broke rat. I guess that's me again. <laughs> uh, the uh, challenge of parenthood. <laughs> I mean, he's he he's filling the role of your son quite well. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so yeah, you guys uh, head off. Um, Kima, you're headed toward the puddles, um, which uh, is a bit of a mixed uh, part of the station. It's one that is uh, largely aquatic, and uh, you see mostly the uh, aquatic, or it's mostly submerged, and you see mostly the aquatic species uh, spend time there because it's a bit more you know natural to them. Uh, though there are ways for them to visit the rest of the station when necessary. Um, and parts of it are quite nice with uh, kind of idyllic settings, and um, there are various uh, beaches there as well as, uh, you know, underwater lagoons and coral reefs and all that kind of stuff. But there are also definitely some sections of the puddles that uh, one would not want to swim around on a dark evening. Um, so... Uh, yeah, a uh, bit of a mixed neighborhood, but you're definitely headed for a bit of the nicer part. Um, you guys, uh, you uh, make your way to a uh, a diner, which is uh, kind of set up actually uh, right off of one of the various tunnels that crisscross the puddles, allowing access to the different sections for terrestrial creatures like yourselves. Um, and... You, uh, it's, uh, it's got this great view out into, uh, an underwater, uh, view of, uh, coral reef and, uh, various, uh, both sentient and non-sentient, uh, species, uh, kind of swimming around, going about their daily lives. Um, Ooh. are you showing up before, after, or right at the, uh, kind of, uh, Agreed upon meeting that time. So I show up 20 minutes early in the parking lot. So I have to wait 10 minutes before I go in. So I'm only 10 minutes early. Okay. Um, so yeah, you, uh, you do that. Once you get there, uh, you actually uh, already see uh, May. Uh, she's sitting at a, a table by one of the windows. And uh, as soon as she sees you come in, uh, she uh, kind of gestures and says, "Hey, over here! I already grabbed us a table." Um. So yeah, you head over. Uh, she seems to have already ordered herself a glass of wine, but uh, that appears to be it. Uh, so she says, "Well, how was your day today?" Oh, it was good. Pretty chill, actually. Just uh. <laughs> Hung out in the house. Nice. Were you uh Were you able to get down to level twenty one and uh, do any of the the uh, investigating you were saying you wanted to get done? I think you'd talked about that, had you not? Um, I'm pretty sure I used my uh like skills so that she didn't really know what I was fishing for. I seem to remember rolling. I thought that was mostly to hide your background, but that you had talked about your um, the facts that you were looking into the t level twenty one crew. Maybe I'm cool with her knowing that. Um, we did some, but not a lot today. Well, hopefully that investigation bears some fruit. Uh, Thank you. Um, but how was your day? It wasn't too bad. I didn't do much. Uh, Mostly just kind of wandered around, a bit of uh, window shopping, and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Bought myself a new pair of shoes. Uh, and she kind of gestures under the table, and there is, in fact, a, a bag with uh, kind of like paper um, over the top. So you can't see what's in it, but you presume shoes. Um, oh, so, very nice. Yeah, good day overall. Uh do you want to order? Uh, I've never been here, so unfortunately I can't really suggest anything. Well, I'm cool with exploring new things together anyway. Um, right. So I'm going to look at the menu. Cool. Um, so yeah, we'll leave off there. Uh, so getting back to Wreckage and Braun. Uh, you guys are dropped off by your uh, your Uber. This time it's um, a uh, a red car. Um, 
that is uh, decorated like a race car. Race car. It's uh, and uh, it's uh, even got kind of like um, eyes painted on the windshield, and it uh, has like a little mouth on the front. It talks to you and uh, about his days when he was a race car, and it's totally not Lightning McQueen um, at all. Um, so anyway, uh, you guys are dropped off by this robot car, and. Uh, yeah, you're now standing outside of Mama Fat's Bodega once again. And no one's getting fat except Mama Fat. I mean, do you want her to get even fatter? Because I feel like that means she's going to eat you. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. So, uh... Pops, I mean, uh, Braun, what, what do we, what do you want to do? How do you want this to go down? <laughs> well, let's just go in there and see what happens. Oh man, I put my explosives back in my pocket. <laughs> All right, so you guys head in. Uh, I would assume you are headed, uh, back over to where Mama Fats is, uh, so uh, once she sees you guys coming up, she says, Well, glad you guys made it back in one piece. Uh, they're ready for you. Uh, need you to leave your weapons here. Uh, you know, security and formalities and all that. Uh, you'll get them back uh, when you come on, when you uh, uh, come back through here. Um, so she uh, takes a, a box out from under the counter and kind of puts it out in front of you guys. Um, yeah, I put all my weapons in there. All right. Uh, is anyone trying to smuggle any weapons in? Yes. All right. What are you trying to smuggle? I'm going to try to smuggle, smuggle one of my pistols in my cheek pouch. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me a sleight of hands check. Um, do you have any applicable bonuses to hiding something in your cheek pouch? Uh, that is your prerogative to know. So uh, if you don't know of any, then just go ahead and roll it normally. Alrighty. Nice. All right. So you are able to. Let's give. Let's be fair. Let's give her a roll. I, I mean, I can't imagine she's going to do better than you, but let's give her a perception check. Nope. All right. So, oh, yes. Oh, wow. That was close, though. <laughs> it was pretty close. So you successfully kind of, like, uh, pop a, an azimuth laser pistol in your, uh, in your ch uh, cheek and um, kind of put it away. And then you're like, here you go. And I pull my weapons out after you finish emptying the rest of the stuff out of your pockets and hideaway limbs <laughs> and other various places. Uh, so <laughs> she kind of looks you both over real quick and says, all right. And she, uh, puts it under the counter, uh, go ahead and head back. And she presses a button underneath the counter and you see a, uh, false wall, uh, kind of slide to the side, um, uh, in the back. Very fancy. Um, yeah, we head back there. All right. Uh, so you get back there, um, and uh, it's a there's a, a small room, um, barely more than a hallway. Uh, there's a couple of chairs there, uh, uh, kind of uh, on the uh, back corners of the room, and uh, there's also a, a couple of guards standing outside of a, a fairly um, nondescript door. Um, also in the back of the room. Uh, as you enter, the uh, the false door kind of slides back into place behind you. Uh, the two guards, it appears to be a, um, a young female Isoki with black fur and a purple stripe uh, in her hair, and the other one seems to be a uh, middle-aged human male. Um, he seems to have several um, modifications as well. He's got like a robot eye and 
Um, one of his hands is uh, actually replaced with a machine gun. Uh, so the two of them kind of give you a once over as well and uh, seem satisfied. So they're like, all right, you can see the boss. Um, so they open the door. As the door is opening, uh, you can tell just by the heft of it um, that uh, this is definitely not just mere wood. This is probably a uh, steel reinforced uh, door that has been covered in wood to make it appear like a normal door. Um, and uh, you guys are ushered back into a, uh, a dimly lit kind of smoky um, room. This one is uh, much more spacious than the, uh, the one that you were just in. Um, and sitting behind a mahogany desk, uh, smoking an enormous cigar, is a, a um, kind of older, isoki male uh, who seems to be uh, cybernetically modified in several ways. Let me see. I, I should have a picture around here somewhere. Where is Jabaxa? Here he is. There is Jabaxa. Um, so he uh, looks up at you guys and he says, well, Welcome to my uh, humble home. What can uh, what can I do for you? You've uh, requested an audience. I hope you uh, aren't here to start trouble. Uh, he says, kind of uh, looking toward the guards who are flanking you on either side. Friends of Dorvor Creole. That name means nothing to me, but. Go ahead, take a seat. Let's talk business. Um, so uh, he gestures to a couple of seats across the desk from him. Um, so yeah, we were supposed to meet up with Dwarvor, and uh, when we arrived, it was in the middle of a firefight between your crew and the Downside Kings. And, unfortunately, Dwarver was lost in the crossfire. Uh, it wasn't until later that I found out that, uh, that you guys were directly involved with Dwarvor at all, but apparently you were hired to protect him. So, uh, yeah. Not to the best of my knowledge. I don't even recognize the name Dwarvor Creel. Uh, we were hired by uh, Astral Ex or no, Astral Extractions, uh, the Heart Scrabble Collective, to look after their in uh, interests. It seems that somebody uh, had hired the Downside Kings to lean on them, but uh, uh, unless one of my uh, one of my subordinates uh, has been getting some work on the side, which is perfectly allowable as long as he uh, chips in his uh, the gang's cut. Uh, I don't know anything about this particular individual you're talking of. Kid, am I forgetting something? Uh, you were misinformed. <laughs> you were talking to a kid. Oh. Uh, so the kid, uh, he did tell you that uh, his dad had been hired to protect Dwarver Creel, which was true. Uh, but it wasn't that the gang had been, which is what the kid kind of suggested. Um, but yeah, no, the, the kid just gave you imperfect information. But obviously your, your character didn't know that. Well, it seems we've got our wires crossed somewhere. Uh, what can you tell me about the Scrabble Collective Miners? What were you doing for them? Uh Fairly typical protection gig. They were being threatened by uh, the Downside Kings. Downside Kings are one of our rivals. We agreed to give them a little bit of uh, protection. Make sure that they didn't get attacked. Uh, sounds like we didn't do too great a job. That's why my boys were down there to begin with. They were, uh, they were there because we heard the Downside Kings were making a move. So we went there to counter them. Uh, what I heard, it was in a wildly successful operation. They killed a lot of them. Uh, though they did, though I uh, was told that there was a, a group of uh, 
individuals there who actually did lend quite a bit of assistance, so I would imagine, given your story, that was you. I can't take all the credit. That was my boy Wreckage here and his little pet robot. Well, you have my yeah. thanks. It could have uh, could have been quite a bit more bloody if you hadn't been here. Uh, as a, a token of my thanks, and uh, he pulls out three um, relatively clean glasses and then a, a nondescript jar. It's just this uh, black jar with three white X's on it. Uh, and he pours out three glasses of a uh, kind of... Uh, murky brown liquid and says uh, a drink. Yeah. Drink. Yes. And he uh, pushes two, two of them toward you guys. To what do we drink? Uh, to what I hope can be a mutually beneficial uh arrangement between the two of us. And if nothing else, thanks for your having helped out my boys back there at the dock. Anytime. Down the hatch. Alright. Um, so he also drinks about the same time that you guys do. Um, Wreckage, are you drinking? Um, I was just trying to figure out I was trying to figure out if there was anything I know that I could like tell what he's given us. Or if there's anything funny about it, would that maybe be like a science, a physical science roll? Sure, go ahead and give me a if physical I wanted science to see. roll. Okay. Oh, and uh, it goes without saying, as part of you leaving your weapons behind, Sparky is not with you. Aww. Alrighty. Um, it it seems to be more or less bathtub moonshine. Beyond that, uh, if they've put anything weird in it, you can't tell. Okay. I'd, I go ahead and drink mine, too. All right. Uh, yeah, so it burns. Uh, this stuff is, if anything, worse than uh, that nonsense that uh, Braun purchased way back at the beginning of the game. Um, but he's also not drinking, like, four entire glasses of it. This was just kind of a, a quick, friendly shot. Um so yeah, um, it definitely burns as it goes down your throat, and you can feel the warming sensation coming over you. Uh, and uh, he says, ah, good stuff. Made it myself. Now, Delicious. Glad you like it. Uh, Love a nice there? burn to my liquor. Same, same. None of that, none of that girly frou-frou stuff. Not for me. Um, was that a, um, uh, fortitude check, Wayne? Just randomly rolled. Anyway, um, now, down to business. Uh, glad you helped my boys out. If I can answer a few questions, I will, but what is it that you want? Let's not, uh, beat around the bush any further. Uh, well, since you don't seem to know much about Dwarf or Creole in particular, uh, do you know if the Downside Kings have anything to do with that mysterious ship, the Acreon? Uh, not directly. Uh, obviously, the Hard Scrabble Collective, they, uh, they, uh, they were the ones who had that... Cr they, they are the organization that the uh, Acreon's crew belonged to. Um, there's actually a bit of a dispute between them and uh, Disney um, over who has rights to the Drift Rock. That's Between that and the, dis the uh, mysterious disappearance of the entire crew, that's why they've got the whole thing up in uh, um, quarantine right now. Uh, Interesting. So I guess that would be the only connection w uh, between the two is... Uh, Hard Scrabble Collective has an interest in the ship, and uh, the uh, the downside kings are uh, hired by someone to lean on them. So interesting, indeed. Sounds like we need to see who's behind the increased activity of the downside kings. That would definitely help. I mean, heck, if you guys want to talk to them, I can tell you where they're headquartered. Uh, not that uh, talking would probably go too well, if you know anything about their uh, new leader, Farani Nadaz. She's a wicked woman. 
what do you think our best approach would be then? Do you I have mean, good relate? I guess <laughs> you probably don't have good relationships with them, considering no. you guys kill each other. But yeah, no, we are definitely rivals. Unfortunately, I can't risk uh, starting an all-out gang war with them, so I can't take any direct action. But if any of their boys come on our turf, we we show them what for. Uh. I mean, actually, heck. that uh, that ties into my question, which is, uh, what does protection cost these days? Well, let's not get into particular numbers, but let's just say uh, we had an equitable agreement. Oh, I was thinking more along the lines of, you know, we're kind of new here. You kind of know things. We kind of could use some help. What, uh, what, what, what would you be interested in from us? Uh, well, I mean, the biggest thing I think that you could do, and I feel like this would help us both out, is if you could strike a blow against the downside kings, uh, as a proxy, so to speak. Uh, I can let you know where they're headquartered, and uh, you could probably get in there and do a bit of a surgical strike uh, against their leadership without bringing down the wrath of the entire gang and then get out again. Uh, Certainly would be doing me some favors to weaken them a bit. Things uh, things were already tense between us before, but ever since that woman Ferrani Nadaz took over, things have gotten worse and worse. Well, can you point us in the direction of their hideout? Sure. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so he pulls out a, a device and kind of pops up a, a 3D screen of the station. He says, this is level 21 where we are. Uh, and then he kind of scrolls down a few levels. This is where this is the level the downside kings uh, have the strongest grip, though they do uh, claim quite a few floors both above and below that one, including our uh, level here on the 20, uh, 21st, but uh, we've been able to hold them back so far. Uh, and then he pinches and zooms into a specific area. He says, this right here is a nightclub. It's called the... I uh, can't believe I just spaced it. Literally knew it, and I spaced it. It's called the Fusion Queen. Bit of a techno dance nightclub it's real popular among the uh the younger crowd uh, especially all the druggies uh around uh they're stationed out of here don't know much more than that but uh we have uh we've sent people down to take a look a couple of times and we've definitely seen their leadership come in and out so uh that seems to be their headquarters where they operate out of uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's a back entrance, uh, and he uh, kind of points around and says, similar to what we've got here, they uh, presumably will have their safe house pretty well secured, uh, but if you can get in the front, uh, you might be able to find a way to talk or shoot your way in. It's in it for us if we do the dirty work for you. Well... Unfortunately, not much I can offer you, uh, or will offer you, considering the rewards are pretty self-explanatory. First of all, this forwards your uh, investigation into the death of Dwarvor Creel. My boys did not shoot him. I'm certain of that. If he got caught in the crossfire, that's possible, but I think it's more likely that the reason the Downside Kings were there was to get your guy. Uh considering he's the only one that actually got, you know, shot full of holes in the entire incident. Well, aside from their boys, but uh, that's a little bonus for us. Uh, so I would imagine you might be able to get information out of it. Additionally, I mean, they've got to have something stockpiled there. Resources, money, drugs, whatever you want. I mean, you keep it. We're not going down there. Fair enough. Well, we appreciate the information. Wreckage, you got any more questions? I think I'm good. Let's blow. All right. Uh, and he uh, swipes the number towards you. That's the number for Big Mom back. Uh, 
uh, Mama Fats back there. If you need to get a hold of me, go ahead and message her. She'll get a, she'll get something through to me. Uh, doubt that we'll have too much business after this, but uh, just in case, better to be safe than sorry. If I hear anything about them, uh, any movements that I think would interest you guys, I'll I'll let you know. Awesome. All right. So we hightail it out of there before any funny business goes down. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so yeah, you you get out there. Um, you know, no, you didn't. Oh, I was supposed to make you make it make a uh, diplomacy check. <laughs> oh well, you guys would have made it anyway, so no biggie. I think my diplomacy is really low. <laughs> Minus one diplomacy. <laughs> no. Worry about it. Yeah, we'll just call it good. Um, so yeah, you guys. <laughs> what was happening in there was we were making a connection, and if we take care of the downside kings, then they owe us one. So you know, that's that's why I was asking those questions. You know, Braun. I think maybe. We should, uh, you know, go have a little bit of carnage. But we should take chemo, of course. Yeah, we're going to need all the firepower we can get. And we're going to need to play it safe. We can't take on a whole gang by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't want to have the entire gang call down on you. I mean, you had enough trouble with four, you know, ugly-looking humans. Uh you don't need an entire level's worth of gang members on you. All yeah, right. First thing we need to do is some recon. I think we might also need to do some grinding. Let's level up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> that is not how Pathfinder or Starfinder works. You don't just, like, grind levels. Ah. Uh. uh. So, unless you, unless you have a real good excuse why you're getting into fights, uh, Gonna we're going to do all the side quests until we're max gear. That's <laughs> so, right. You just roll in your level, like, you know, 20 characters, and you're just like, hi, guys, snap your fingers, and they all fall dead instantly. Um, no. <laughs> going to put the kibosh on that one. No grinding for levels. Uh, only makes sense in a video game. <laughs> So you guys, uh, you guys are come back out. Um, you know, one of the guards, the... Uh, uh, a soaky female kind of pushes a button on the wall and the door slides back. And, um, as you're exiting, uh, she actually uh, gives Wreckage a, a pat on the butt on his way out. And then uh, winks at him when he turns around in surprise of someone actually uh, doing to him what he does to other people. Um... um. Yeah, uh, have a good day, miss. Uh, <laughs> and she just winks and then closes hey, the door. <laughs> Wait up! Uh, <laughs> so you guys head back out, and Mama Fats is there. She pulls out your weapon box. How'd it go, boys? Pretty good. Nothing went terribly wrong, so that's that's all you can hope for. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> good thing you guys didn't start a fight. Baxa would have kicked your teeth in for sure. <laughs> Even you, cutie. And she pinches uh, Wreckage's cheeks and uh, he spits the gun out that was hidden in his cheek pouch <laughs> right into her face. And she's like, Well, let's just keep this our secret that I missed that when you went in. How about that? <laughs> sure yeah, thing. then whose teeth would be getting kicked in? <laughs> ah, little pea shooter like like the Nasmus laser pistol wouldn't have done you much good anyway. Uh, and, you, and then she picks up your uh, revolver, uh, brawn, and kind of hands that over and says, "Now this thing, this thing looks like it could put the hurt out." Yeah, if I remember to use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys, 
guys gather up your gear and head out. I would assume you're headed back to your space B&B now. Uh, it's kind yep. of dinner-ish time. Did you want to pick up some food while you're here? Uh, you know, it's uh, not like Earth normal, but it's definitely a lot more normal food around here than what you saw at that uh, hot dog vendor. Um, there's even a few different um, Isoki specialty uh, dishes that uh, might interest uh, wreckage. So, wait, where are we staying now that we're done at the bed and breakfast? Or uh, No, you, so you're, you've still got you, the bed and breakfast. Okay. Yeah, I think you so guys would, grabbed that for a be, week. What would be the Ahsoki version of, like, the regular American meat and potatoes type of dinner? Uh, it's like, you remember in uh, Kronk's New Groove, they had that dish that was like a, a, a cooked roly-poly stuff with cheese? Oh, yeah, I'll take that. It's it's literally just that. That's like a, what I want. That's a what giant roly-poly. You, like, smack it, and it unrolls and lets out, like, uh, steam, and it's just stuffed with cheese, and it's crunchy and gooey and delicious. Uh, yummy. Let's do it. All right. Uh, do you want one uh, as well, Braun? Please. All right. So and I... speaking of dinner, I still haven't eaten dinner myself, so... Cool. We're uh, pretty close to wrapping up. We've been going for about an hour and 20 minutes, so about 10 more minutes. Okay, sweet. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, dinner, she... much, <laughs> dinner, much like sleep, is for the week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, so she pulls out a couple of these and says, This is my specialty, just like Pappy used to make them. Back on uh, Akaton, I think is where you guys are from. Pretty sure it's Akaton. <laughs> Just like Did Pappy get- used to make on Akaton. What was that, Wayne? Did you get the big thumbs up from Pappy on this recipe? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Everything I learned, I learned from him. Uh, you guys dig in. That there's real food. Not like this fake soylent green type paste you weirdos eat here in space. Uh, so yes, you dig in. It is uh, excellent. A um, little bit weird at first. Um, well, I don't know, Bron. You're probably comfortable uh, eating bugs at this point in your life. Yeah, th- this it doesn't gross me out nearly as much as the tentacles. Okay. So yeah, no. Uh, you guys dig in. Uh, it is actually great. Um, so. Uh, yeah, you guys, uh, while you're eating, you actually kind of see a, a shift change. Uh, and, uh, you know, the guards swap out. Um, the uh, the male seems to kind of just head out, but the uh, the female Ahsoki just kind of uh, wanders around uh, browsing the aisles for a bit while you guys finish eating. Um, and then as you guys are leaving, she actually slips something into... Uh, wreckage's back pants pocket let's get a perception check to see if you notice her doing that hang on just a second i've got a child trying to crawl into my t-shirt dun, dun, dun. oh you wouldn't notice uh jason this is just for wreckage oh gotcha Let's see. Reception is a plus four, by the way, Wayne, if you're looking that up. Cool. Uh, nope, she gets one past you. Uh, so you do not notice this happening. Dun, dun, dun. Alrighty. Uh, so you guys uh, head out and uh, back to your space B&B. Meanwhile, um, Kima, what are you and Amy up to at this point? Or May, not Amy. It's all the same letters, but in a different order. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say the same thing. You there, Rebecca?
Uh, she'll be right back. She's crawling around on the floor for some reason. <laughs> okay. Let me know when she's back. I'm back. Cool. Was the floor fun? Yes. Cool. All right. So what are you and May up to at this point? We have wine and something resembling pasta and salad and cheeseburger. All right. Uh, definitely going for the starches. Or not starches, the uh, red things. I know words. Anyway, definitely carbs. Yes, that's it. Um, definitely going for the carbs. That's all right. Uh, so, yeah, the, the food is quite good. Uh, and uh, you guys have been making kind of light conversation, uh, entertaining each other, and uh, laughing, talking about uh, previous adventures and uh, the things that you've been up to. Uh, you've been prying any deeper into, like, uh, personal opinions and whatnot, trying to get a feel for who she is a little bit more? Yeah! Right. Definitely. Not super, like, I don't know. I definitely want to get to know her. Not getting to know people is nice. Yep. All right, so you guys have kind of discussed uh, some of your preferences, you know, what kind of pets you would have, uh, you know, uh, if you could uh, have dinner with any one person, living or dead, who would it be, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, she seems to be uh, friendly and very outgoing. Um uh, definitely, uh, seems like she'd be, uh, a good dog mom, but said that she would, you know, just too busy to have a pet at this point, uh, and, uh, that she really doesn't feel like she'd be able to take care of it properly. Um, that sort good. of thing. How, how have you been presenting yourself? And how much, how much does that differ from, uh, you know, the actual you? Um, I've been presenting myself pretty much how my character is. Super chill, but very eco-conscious. And... You, like, they came out with a plastic straw and you just gave them, like, a death stare. <laughs> and I'd pull out not one, but two plastic straws from my bag because <laughs> she can't have a plastic straw either. That's right. You gotta bring the reusable straws with you to a restaurant. I mean, especially one by the ocean. Come on! Exactly. They don't want to try in their nose. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, yeah, so things have de definitely gone well. You guys seem to be uh, hitting it off. Um, and, uh,. Yep, things things go pretty smoothly on your date. Dinner is great. Uh, afterwards, you kind of go for a bit of a walk, and uh, she uh, kind of shows you around to a couple of her favorite places, including um, uh, there's uh, an island that she brings you to, or kind of a, a, a beach slash island thing. Uh, you guys paddle out to on a little pedal boat, um, and. Uh, you can uh, see that uh, it's uh, set up to where there's this uh, fake sunset pattern uh, that is that goes uh, kind of across the ocean uh, every couple of hours. Um, and so you guys uh, got there just in time to watch this uh, simulated sunset over the ocean as the, uh, the waves kind of ripple against the beach. Um, you guys are sitting under a, a synthetic palm tree. Uh, enjoying yourselves quite a bit. And, uh, yep, right as, uh, the, uh, the, and you guys have been holding hands this entire time, right as the sun kind of begins to set, uh, she, uh, goes in for the kiss. Uh... Kima is very open and receptive. All right. Um, Sap, you guys uh, do the kiss. 
Uh, it's very romantic. Uh, she definitely seems to know what she's doing. Um, but then, <laughs> um, as you are uh, kind of uh, going, uh, starting to get to towards second base, uh, you hear the this uh, kind of rhythmic splashing sound uh, from off near you. Um, at first, you ignore it, but it uh, it continues to get louder. And then, after a minute, she uh, she looks, she kind of breaks away to look, and you do as well. And there, in a bright pink swan boat, um, you see four rather uh, recognizable individuals paddling towards you. And hopping out, you see the guys from uh, yesterday um, still in their long leather jackets, trying to look cool despite having ridden here in a pink swan boat. Uh, and they hop out and they're like, well, looky here. Wasn't expecting to see you here again. Man, my luck is huge, hugely great. I can't wait. This is going to be fun. You don't have any friends to help you out this time, little girly. Um, oh, and it's actually not all four. It's two of them. Um, I said that. Did I need any help last time? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, the way I remember it, I sent you and your friends away crying. I mean, if I wasn't such a nice guy who even takes pity on aliens and like weird things like dwarves, you would, your friend would be dead right now, and you would have joined him next. Um, and so then he, uh, he, yep, hefts out his, uh, his pipe, same as last time, and, uh, his friend, uh, pulls a chain that he's been wearing as a belt out, and it's like, all right, now it's time to get some revenge for my boys, he says as he reaches down and fondles himself, uh, and we will go ahead and leave it off there. So, to be to continued. Alrighty. Well, uh, with that wrapping us up, let's go ahead and finish out the way we always do. And what has uh, Wreckage learned? I have learned not to eat weird tentacle things from random street vendors. <laughs> hey, the tentacle thing was fine. It was asking for one of everything that actually did you in. Uh, all right. the one with everything. <laughs> you did. Um, Jason, if you're back, what have you learned? Braun learned not to trust everything he hears from kids. <laughs> yep. I mean, it was, a, it was a small misunderstanding, but yeah, no. It was definitely the kids' understanding. Made me look <laughs> stupid in front of the gang boss. <laughs> yep. Uh, speaking of the gang boss, I'm sorry. I really wanted to do uh, like a Godfather accent for him, but a my Godfather accent is really bad, and b after doing the voice for uh, Mama Fat and the uh, hot dog guy, my voice was just like shot at that point. <laughs> uh, so it did not happen. <laughs> um. Alrighty. And what about uh, Kima? What did she learn? Um, I mean, I guess today Kima learned that she looks kind of silly when she draws eyebrows on, so she washed them back off. <laughs> I mean, look at the pictures. Some of them are to have eyebrows, some of them don't. So honestly, you could probably go either way. Um, but your eyebrows are, I mean, it's quite likely your eyebrows are actually just like a skin pigment, like a lizard, instead of being actual hairs. Um, but anyway, it's your character. That is up to you how you want your eyebrows to be. Alrighty. Well, everybody, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, hopefully everybody had fun and I will see you all next time.